I've already attached the bearing puller to the hub. The thing I'm going to do next is when I made this 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 puller, I didn't anticipate on using it again, so I, I really did not spend the time to put what are called wrench slots. So that way you can use a you can actually use a wrench, you know, to, to hold on to it. So I'm going to go ahead and just use these channel locks. And as you can see, I'm carefully, as I tighten it, you can see that the, the hub is drawing out of the shaft. And I'm pretty much right at the end of my bearing puller, but it's, it's, it's free. So we're going to go ahead and pull the bearing puller off. I'm going to back off on this sailing wrench, or this sailing bolt. And I'm going to take the bearing puller off. I can actually just go ahead and take, it up, take the hub off the back plate. When I, I advise that when you take a, a reel apart, pull it apart slowly so you, you see how everything goes back together. Otherwise, you, you're going to be on the phone with either the, the manufacturer or someone else that has the reel if it's a discontinued reel. I've had one of these apart in the past, and I, I just went ahead and pulled it off. On this particular reel, you have the bearing. This is the inner bearing spacer. And then on the, on the hub, they have a, a shoulder on the inside to help maintain the space and uh, I'm just going to lightly push on the bearing when you push on the bearing make sure you're not pushing on the shields the shields can bend easily it's just a real real thin piece of, of uh, metal that's been stamped so on these micas once once you have the the hub off the shaft they're known for just pulling right out of this housing this housing is made out of titanium it's very light and uh, they can really hold tolerances very well with, with this type of material at the right machine shop. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and clean the spool on on the micas, and there's two different ways you can approach cleaning the spool. Uh, the first way is recommended where you strip the line off the reel, you know, so you can be very thorough and make sure that you don't get any type of solvents or or cleaning agents on the line that could break it down. But in this instance, what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and spray the towel and then use the towel and apply it to the, the reel. So I went ahead and uh, put the water on the reel, on the rag, excuse me. And when you do it, wash very lightly. And then if you're getting to a dirty area, you'd want to go ahead and lightly go over top of it, but then change cloth surfaces so that way whatever you've lifted off does not come off onto the rag. And then gets reintroduced to the reel in the form of a scratch. You should probably note that the steps that you're taking, the ultra careful steps that you're taking are for, for those that truly appreciate their equipment and want to keep it looking brand new. Uh, you'll take these extra steps. For the guys that really beat on their equipment, um, yeah. you're probably not going to care so much about you know these light dust overs before you grind a the dirt into the reel before you clean yes. it, you know, it's just... Yeah, in fact, on my personal reel, with, you know, because you end up with, uh, you know, if you use uh, skein or row, you end up with a lot of, a lot of uh, coating on your reel, and I use scotch bright and, and dish soap. Uh, it does affect the finish a little bit, but it, you know... You're going to end up with a matte finish reel in yeah. the end if it's gloss to begin. Yes, but, you know, it for me, it's, it's a tool, and... I don't even. I usually don't even have a real pouch if it's not a if it's not a custom or a high value reel. I I just I I beat on it. Plus, you have a whole shop at your disposal. So if you really do any permanent damage, just a matter of spending a day here making a new part. That's right. And then, you know, for cleaning the holes, you can also stick your finger down in that and rotate and clean out the the rings in there. We're gonna go ahead and switch to a cleaner rag. Okay, we've went ahead and cleaned all the different reels. Uh, you know, because we're going into detail on the micas, I just went ahead and got the other ones cleaned out of the way. We're going to go ahead and now uh, commence on the reassembly. Uh, the first thing you want to do is when you go ahead and put it, put the reel back together, you want to put a light coat of grease on the shaft. Uh, this is just to make sure that it helps the bearing slide in and off the shaft without galling. So we're just going to take a, you know, went ahead and put a little bit of white lithium grease on there. We're just going to move it, 
get a nice even coat around the shaft. Then we're going to take the hub. We're going to put the, the inner bearing in the hub. Then we're going to go ahead and slide it on the shaft. And the reason why I'm, I'm doing it this way is because if you put the, the hub together with the bearings and everything, it, 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 it's more difficult to get it on the shaft. So this way you can easily assemble the different components. Like I just put the inner bearing space around. Uh, inner bearing spaces are pretty, pretty much standard on, on the high end reels. Uh, they, between that spacer and, and the outer bearing spacer it helps make sure that the end play is, is very minimal. And then you take the outer bearing and you push it on. And then we're going to take the spool retention screw and we're going to go ahead and put it back in. This is the screw that that was Loctited on and we're going to go ahead and put it back in without Loctite. Uh, once a screw has been Loctited and you remove it, there's residual Loctite left on the screw that actually still helps maintain a, it, it's more of a, it, at this point, like an anti-vibratory type situation, not just a full Loctite. And uh, I found that they still work as well. So, and it, and it helps so that way you're not messing with Loctite or having to heat the reel back up. And as far as torque, um, these small screws, they they're, they are forgiving, so you can't put a lot of torque on them. Um, I I go a little bit past snug. I have I've yet to have a, a a screw back out on me doing it doing that. So the hub hub is on. We're gonna then take and put the spool back on, and we're gonna we put the we put the spool over top of the hub, and as you can see, the holes aren't aligned. One method to to line it up is you you can continually remove the spool and put it back on or you can take a, a Phillips, the small Phillips screwdriver and you can lightly throw it into threads and you can see that those screws line up and you want to keep all of these these holes lined up as best as possible because these are small threads and you can cross thread then uh, excuse me from here we then put the release cap back on Not, not the release cap, excuse me, the uh, the bearing cover. And at this point, you start putting the screws in, but you don't you don't tighten them, you don't snug them, you leave them nice and loose. Whenever you're putting anything together that has more than one screw mounting hole, you want to leave it loose so that way the components can find find the right location to one another. If you tightened one of the screws and then you just repeated that, there's the possibility that these screws rotated the, the, the cover in a fashion that all these holes don't line up and then you can either potentially cross that or you won't be able to get the screw in. Okay, now all four are in there and we we'll go ahead and draw them tight. And this is another situation where just snug. And there you have it.